A very good afternoon to all examiners. My name is Jason, and here we have Wen Hong, Ovindajit, Osma, and Yavinesh. We are students from Union State Energy Petronas, and we are here to deliver a proposal titled Sustainable Photocatalytic Writer Design in Dry Forming of Methane Process. This will be the topics covered in our sharing session. According to the latest research, the likelihood of crossing a key global warming threshold has risen significantly. There's now 50% chance of the world will warm by 1.5 degrees Celsius over the next 5 years. A novel strategy of dry forming of methane DRM is found to be potentially replace the current steam methane forming process. This method has been reported by utilizing two greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane to produce hydrogens. Due to the lack of a suitable catalyst that is active and has low deactivation rates, the generation of syngas by dry forming has not been commercialized in an industry scale. Based on the identified problem statement, three objectives are determined. Firstly, we are determined to propose a solution targeting the greenhouse gases issue, which can be a hydrogen production technology that is energy efficient and more environmentally friendly utilizing the greenhouse gases. So based on that technology, we hence design a reactor system. Background of the dry reforming of methane process, also known as the DRM reaction. So in DRM, the main feedstocks are methane, CH4, as well as CO2, carbon dioxide, which in turn produces hydrogen gas as well as carbon monoxide. Therefore, at 700 degrees Celsius, the conversion of methane and carbon dioxide is 92% and 88% respectively. Therefore, the photocatalytic principle is proposed to reduce the activation energy of this reaction as well as the operating temperature which can be reduced to as low as 300 degrees Celsius. Now, we may distribute the reactor design into three different perspectives which are sustainability and carbon capture, catalyst optimizations, and efficiency heat flux. The overall reactor design is basically like an inverted flush dome shape. UV light is to replace the sunlight to be used on photocatalysts. UV light is preferred over natural sunlight since it can provide a constant intensity to activate the photocatalyst. Quartz window or quartz immersions well acts as a transparent barrier that separates the UV light from being direct contact with the reactants and at the same time allowing maximum transmissions of UV radiations. Next, the heating jacket is injected with steam in three separated zones to ensure uniform heating and avoid large temperature gradients. Besides, the membrane is catalytically inert and does not participate in the reaction directly. It simply acts as a barrier to the reaction's components, allowing selective separations of desired products from side products. First of all, the integration of solar power system is sustainably used to supply the electricity to the UV light and steam heating. Solar thermal energy is converted into electrical energy and it can be stored in the battery bank in case of the poor weather and the reactions can still proceed without being much affected. The electrical energy converted from solar energy helps to compensate a certain amount of energy. Next, the membrane allows selective separation of desired products from undesired products. The chosen membrane here is an organic PD-based microporous membrane, which can withstand the high temperatures up to 650 degrees C. In this reactor design, as the reactions completes at the bottom part of the vortex reactors, the reactions mixture is passed through the layers of membrane to separate side products, mostly carbon monoxide, from the desired products hydrogens. The retained mixture is to be captured and the desired product hydrogens can be obtained at a high purity. Catalyst optimization, we started off by picking the most suitable support for our catalyst, which is Santa Barbara Amorphous 15, or also known as SBA 15. So besides its array of advantages, SB15 possesses an excellent semiconductor characteristic in the form of silica oxide or SiO2, which is a crucial property in developing a photocatalyst. We chose nickel-based catalyst as the basis of our novel photocatalyst due to its low cost as well as its suitability towards the DRM reaction. However, the major drawback of nickel-based catalyst is that it shows rapid deactivation due to its low resistance against coke formation. However, various researchers have suggested that strontium doped catalysts portrayed an overall improvement in the catalytic activity due to its reduction of carbon formation on the catalyst surface. Therefore, we have proposed a novel photocatalyst by the name of nickel strontium catalyst supported on SBA15. Shown in the figure below, the nickel strontium photocatalyst is then activated with the presence of UV rays. Therefore, Photocatalyst also reduces the activation energy of the overall catalyst as compared to a regular thermal reaction. 
As the reaction requires relatively high energy, effective heat flux is needed which only happens when the mixture is well mixed. So the reaction's mixture is mixed using the vortex principle replacing the stirrer. A vortex reactor has a certain advantages especially if the reactions are endothermic as enormous heat fluxes can be transmitted to the process stream containing the entrenched solids such as catalysts. So in order to enhance the vortex effects, a downwardly oriented frustum shaped reactor is designed. High velocity gas stream is used to forcefully pass through the multiple inlets inside the reactor, which allows the whirling of the gas flow. The whirling of the gas flow is related to the centripetal force and centrifugal force. For cost and profit analysis, based on the magnitude of sensitivity analysis, two largest factors to lower the hydrogen production cost are feedstock and production time per day, aside on the catalyst behavior. Proposed for the catalytic reactor able to manipulate these factors to reduce hydrogen production costs. In the aspect of catalysts, nickel-based catalysts doped with strontium spotted by Santa Barbara amorphous demonstrate excellent behavior and potentially lower costs due to the commonly available material in the production process. With the solar-powered UV light, it allows for 24 hours operation. Lastly, fit stock cost projected to be further reduced by replacing petrochemical feedstock to a non-fossil fuel source which generally are abandoned. Carbon dioxide and methane can be collected from various non-fossil sources. This created opportunity to create a circular economy by including these gases into chemical supply chain. Five main feedstock were studied and potential rivals to petrochemical feedstock were noted to be landfill gas. It is the cheapest way to generate biogas and compared to anaerobic digester. In addition to continuous supply of waste produced per day, this source will never run out. Purity can simply benefit from this true centralized recycling center. It also worth mentioning that 700 kg per hour mountain ton of municipal waste can produce 77 kg per hour of feedstock according to a studies conducted. As the human population continues to rise exponentially, the world is faced with pressing challenges which includes the threat of climate change and global warming. The global energy consumption shows an increasing trend over the last decade and this has resulted in an accumulation of greenhouse gases such as methane and carbon dioxide. Therefore, to reduce the gases produced, a process called dry reforming of methane was used which uses methane and carbon dioxide to convert to carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Energy consumption is expected to increase dramatically in the coming years along with its associated environmental issues. Catalyst certainly plays a critical role in the design of efficient process and able to maximize the value of starting materials while minimizing waste generation and energy requirements. One such catalyst is the nickel strontium which belongs to the bimetallic catalyst category. Bimetallic catalysts have attracted extensive attention for a wide range of application in energy production and environmental remediation due to their tunable chemical physical properties. However, fine tuning of the structure and the properties of these catalysts is highly desirable to meet the stringent requirements in energy and environmental application. These properties are mainly governed by a number of parameters such as composition of the bimetallic systems, their preparation method, and their morphostructure. structure. Dry reforming of methane is a good environmentally friendly process. However, this process produces carbon monoxide which can be harmful. Therefore, one suggestion to reduce the production of carbon monoxide is by using catalytic converter. This device converts carbon monoxide to form carbon dioxide with the addition of oxygen. Now, in the light of exponentially growing industrial development, sources of energy such as coal, oil, natural gas, and nuclear energy are used, where we all know causes negative environmental effects. To create a greener industry, renewable source such as solar energy was used, in this case, which is then used to power our reactor. To conclude our presentation, dry methane reforming is one of the alternative to steam methane reforming, which can reduce the emitted greenhouse gases, especially methane and carbon dioxide. We also use renewable sources instead of non-renewable sources, in this case the solar energy, to optimize the reactor performance and photocatalytic optimization. Furthermore, we also use bimetallic photocatalysts to optimize the dry methane reforming reaction.